speaking of watches, uh, while we're at I.O., one of their big initiatives, and we've already talked about it a little bit, is Android Wear. That's Google's wearable platform, uh, wearable kind of side of Android for tiny little screens. And to drive the point home, they sent everybody home with their choice of either the Samsung Gear Live, which is the watch that I have right here. Uh, there you can see it on my wrist. And then, Mike, you ended up with the LG G Watch, or the Guatch, as I like to call it. That's right. The Guatch is this one. Uh, they're very similar to each other, of course, because of Android Wear and because, yeah. as uh, we talked about on uh, Tech News Today this week, uh, they don't let you modify, they don't let the OEMs yeah. modify it. So Android Wear is Android Wear. You can modify it sort of with apps by what you install. And there are subtle differences between uh, what each of the watch manufacturers put on there. But for the most part, Android Wear has the same as interface on all devices. I think it makes actually a lot of sense when you're talking about wearables because really a big part of wearing a watch, for example, is the style aspect, right? You, I, I trust... And well, and you know, I guess I do a show about Android and about Google, so maybe that this is a, a little bit of me rubbing off, you know, it rubbing off on me. But I trust Google to give me a user experience that is going to work in this form factor. Um, I trust manufacturers to give me a form factor mm -hmm. that uh, looks appealing. That's sure. something that I like. So. Uh, I suppose let's start there. Let's start with the watch itself, and then maybe we'll circle around at the end and talk a little bit about where as a platform. Um, what, what can you tell me about the G-Watch? Okay, so right now the, the best way to think about these both of these watches is to compare them against each other. So this particular watch is, again, very similar to the, the Samsung watch, although it's smaller and lighter a little bit. Uh, it's 1.8 by 1.5 by 0.39 inches, okay? 1.3 ounces, which is very light. It's almost an ounce lighter than the Samsung watch. Uh, it has a nine axis sensor. So you notice that what happens is you see, if you look at this, if I put my hand over it, I put it to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. So you see how it's black and white. But if I put it down and then bring it back up, it lights up and it can accept commands when I say, OK, Google. What's the weather outside? And, and so it's tethered to your phone. That's right. right. Now, some now every time I've demonstrated this to somebody, it has lost its connection. And you are the only in time the Twit Studio, which is yeah. a land of a thousand wireless interferences. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so there's another interesting feature about this, which people don't really. You know, it's, it's writing down it's everything that I'm saying yeah. here. Um, I put it to sleep and then go back to zero. But you can actually use this without voice by simply tapping it. You get that, and then you can scroll down to the options. So I can basically. Uh, choose one of these if I want to set a timer, start a stopwatch or whatever, show alarms. So I'll start a stopwatch, just choose that, and then go. Oh, neat. And so I didn't use my voice at all, even though it starts with the voice user interface. Right. So again, covering it puts it to sleep. Now you see these other notifications and my timer still going there. I can pause it with that. This is similar to the control for music and so on. So mm -hmm. that's those are Android Wear things not really related to the watch. So let's get back to the uh, watch. Of course, it's Bluetooth uh, uh, tethered. It has a, a, a stronger battery. We talked about this on Tech News Today as well than the Samsung, but it's less, uh, probably has worse battery life than the Samsung because the screen is more of a power hog. Yeah, you know, it's interesting yeah. actually. Ars Technica just did a side-by-side -side, and uh, it turns out that the LG G Watch performed a little better than the Samsung, which I would not have guessed. That's right. Considering the screens. That's right. Um, now this probably gets somewhere, I'm, uh, this is a estimate on my part and this is not based on testing, but I would guess about somewhere between 18 hours to 36 hours of use, depending on whether you're a very heavy user or a very light user. Mm -hmm. And again, the screen is always on, so the time is always shown, either in bright mode or dimmed mode. Right. So you can always just look at the watch and, and get the time, which is which is very nice. That's kind of important, too. Like I even saw it in the chat room. No one ever talks about the fact that you could tell time on these things. Yeah. That is, <laughs> and if, I, I think they, it, these watches do that pretty, pretty effectively. They do, and you can also uh, change the watch face. So you can choose from among, and they have some, you know, this Peter Max like seven, 1972 kind of looking things. <laughs> um, I don't see why anybody would choose that. It's to me, it's not very compelling. But yeah, it's a great watch. It's great mm -hmm. for for telling the time and so on. Uh, so um, back to the back to the hardware here. Um, it, it, this is a, you know, I, I would call, I would say that the pros of this particular watch compared to the Samsung, again, the only comparison we can make at this point, yep. is it's very comfortable, it's easy to charge, 
uh, it, you just simply put it on top of a little little cradle type thing. It doesn't actually plug in. It just sits on top of it, which is nice. Um, it's water resistant. It's nearly an ounce lighter than the Gear Live, and it's even lighter than the Pebble Watch, which mm -hmm. probably does significantly less than an Android Wear watch does. Now, the cons compared to the Samsung are that it has no biometric sensors. Now, there's no heart rate monitor, mm -hmm. nothing. There is a pedometer in there, but that's not a biometric sensor. It has poor sunlight readability. I guess they both do. Uh, it's square rather than round. Some of the better ones are going to be round, I would guess. So-so uh, battery life, uh, lower screen re resolution, and it's less vibrant. The screen is less vibrant than the Samsung. Sure. doesn't look quite as good. Uh, and it costs $30 more. So this is $229. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, those are the pros, or con pros and cons of this particular watch, the LG G watch. Okay. Um, I'll run through the, the Gear Live, and then we can kind of give yeah. our, our try, buy, don't buy. So the, uh, this is the Samsung Gear Live. It looks like... You know, it looks a lot like their their recent kind of incarnation of uh, Galaxy Gear watches for the most part. But this, of course, is running Android Wear. It's 1.2 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 400, uh, 1.63 inch 320 by 320 AMOLED display. So that actually means that when it's in low power mode, all it's doing is lighting up these pixels. It's not blocking out the dark pixels. So in essence, that should be better for your battery life. This is what the Moto X does with active notifications. Um, four gigs of storage on board, although right now it's kind of hard to think about how you'd fill up four gigs, but I'm sure at some point that that will be a reality. And of course, 300 milliamp hour battery, which is a whole 100 milliamp hours less than the LG G watch. Um, you can kind of see the design, right? Like it has the chrome edges, which I actually kind of like, although the design is a little chunky. You have to be okay with that. It actually works on my wrist. I would say that it feels super comfortable and not too overly large on my wrist. I don't feel like I'm wearing a weight when I'm wearing this, but uh, I would imagine if you have smaller wrists, smaller hands, it might stick out just a little bit more. The one difference that this has over the G watch is that it does have a hardware button. It has this little power button. I never use it, but if you want to turn it on from an off state, you can. You can also hold it down and it'll pull up your settings menu eventually. There we go. Oh, I just backed away from it, but there you have it. Um, so underneath, there you go, you have the heart rate monitor. That's the, uh, the biometric sensor that you were talking about. These contacts, of course, clip into a charger. And I, I completely space bring in the charger with me, and I wish I hadn't because it's one of my pain points here. It's really like the G-Watch I know has a magnetic snap to yeah. the charger. Yeah, Those are pretty great. nice. Yeah. Those are really nice. This, you actually have to clip the plastic casing on into these little notches on the side around the back. And, you know, it's just one of those little things that is annoying over time. Every time you're trying to do it, it's sliding all over the back and you can't quite get it to latch. Uh, screen, you know, pixel wise, I think it's totally fine, sharp enough. You know, rarely are you ever this close. <laughs> Wait a minute, which eye am I looking with? Uh, rarely are you ever this close, so it doesn't matter if you can see the pixels as far as I'm concerned. And like you said, good saturation on this style of screen. Uh, though, again, common complaint, not bright in daylight. When you get out in daylight and you try and turn on the screen and really read what, you know, see what you're looking at, it's really hard to tell. Um, battery for me lasted around one and a half days. That's good or bad, depending on how you look at it, right? Yeah. That's good if you're comparing it to your smartphone, which is just get me through a, a day of normal use or even heavy use. Get me to the end of the day where I'm always going to charge it late at night anyways. So, and that's kind of me. Uh, that's bad if you compare it to some of the competition. The Pebble, in some cases, can go three to four days, and that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So if you're comparing it to those wearables, uh, you're going to have a bad day. Um, so that is the Gear Live. I'd say the pros, definitely the heart rate uh, monitor, the biometric uh, sensor on the back. Uh, Android Wear, of course, I think is an interesting platform for it to, to be on here, so that's good. Uh, it does have a replaceable band, uh, and in fact, it snaps out with this interesting little lever system on this particular band, but it does replace with a normal strap, so that's good. So does the G-Watch. Yep. Uh, and then cons, you gotta have kind of a larger wrist to wear it, battery charging, of course, battery performance, depending on how you define it for a wearable, and hard to see in, in daylight. So if you, so, so that's both of the watches, if yeah. you had to give the LG G-Watch a try, buy, don't buy, what would you give it? Well, I, give it a, I would give it a don't buy, um, simply because we know a lot, we have lots of information about the upcoming Moto 360 yes. watch, and that just looks great. Yeah, it does. It's a round interface, the, the, the way the screen is presented, it, it looks, 
it doesn't look like there's a screen under glass. It's right on the surface, which is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. They are doing all kinds of magic stuff that they're not really talking that much about, but people who have tried it said it's just really uh, beautiful to use. Yeah. It's even lighter than this watch somehow, even though it looks pretty, it, it's, it's actually higher than than the, right. the, the it is LGG, a little bit a little bit higher but yeah. it's it's significantly lighter than this watch and this watch is light so that is kind of an interesting thing so that's coming out near the end of summer and that's you know not very far away so i recommend android wear very, very highly i would yeah. give android wear a buy and i i actually think this is a controversial statement but i actually think pebble is in trouble here um we don't know what apple's going to come out with but android wear is i think a shoe in as a as a killer environment for one reason, and we've talked about this on Tech News Today, which is that it has, it's Google Now on your wrist. Mm -hmm. Google Now is a super compelling platform. Go by Google Now, I, I mean not only Google Now, but also voice, uh, voice search and voice command, uh, and also the preemptive notifications that come with Google Now. Add a bunch of really killer apps that app developers are going to create to that. Right. And it's just a fantastic platform that is going to be very difficult to beat. The only company that I can think of that might get close to it is Apple because they have Siri and they've been improving Siri recently. And so it's, I think it's going to be the Google Now watch versus the Siri watch. I think that's, yeah. you know, a year from now, that's going to be the battle. Yeah, that all makes that all makes perfect sense to me, and I, I completely agree. Android Wear, just as a platform, I mean, it's uh, super powerful with Google Now. Google Now, you know, as as far as the personal assistant in air quotes, whatever you want to yeah. call it, that kind of technology is concerned. <coughs> Google Now seems to kind of be uh, be winning it as far as effectiveness is concerned right now, and giving you what you want to see before you realize you want to see it. Uh, I know that firsthand that's been the case with me, so I would absolutely agree with that. I also think it's very interesting that most apps are compatible with Wear and functional in certain ways without the developer having to really do anything because what it's doing is it's pulling in notifications, right, from your device. So if a developer has already created an app with an actionable notification, so in other words, they've created an app that through the notification you can skip forward or back on a track or archive mail or whatever the case may be, those are going to surface on Android Wear as actions that you can do in the Android Wear interface. To a certain extent, it has to be right. said that, right. they, that if you create an app for Android Wear, you can do things directly from the notification. You can reply, right. you can do things like that. A, a random notification that has, has no awareness or was built long before Android yes. Wear existed will show up but you can't do you can't as much with, with that. It. No. Uh, but it's still great to have it on your wrist, and I think it also needs to be said. There's so much to be said about Android Wear. Uh, it, it's just a fantastic interface. It's a fantastic uh, uh, platform generally. But one of the, the the craziest things about it is that I've found that the, the the voice recognition and also the performance of voice recognition is significantly better than any other place I've seen it. It's better hmm. than on my Moto X. Oh wow. It's just fast, and it recognizes everything. It's it, you know, it's really accurate in how it recognizes voice. I don't know how they do that. Mm -hmm. It just seems instantaneous, and yep. that is a big win for Google on this because you'd think you know you'd have to wait, and it's like a low power device, sure. and it's going back and forth via Bluetooth, so it must be you know no, it's faster than directly on the phone, and you can do that because if you hold the phone and the watch side by side, and you say okay, Google now. <laughs> <laughs> they both do it at the same time. Yeah. Now, I've lost yeah, my connection because yeah. of the studio, but right. but it's faster mm -hmm. and it's more accurate. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. One thing I will say as a downside of Android Wear, because it's so voice enabled or touch enabled um, to, to wake it up, like I have, I have kids, <laughs> right? And if I'm holding my kids, so many phantom touches yeah. because you know I'm just wearing my watch, but I can feel it kind of vibrating in my on my wrist because either you know their 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 clothes rubbed up rubbed up against it and yeah. it registered as a touch or their hands went down there. So so uh, you know I've found mail be archived with, right. without me wanting to do it, and so that can happen. But and I, here's you know. the other thing that can happen: if you hold up your watch, I'm going to launch both of them. Okay. Okay, Google. Yeah. So it did, like mine is still asleep or whatever, but I launched <laughs> yours. So you if did. there's four people with, with, uh, <laughs> with an Android Wear watch, one person using their watch will set off yeah. a search on all of them or whatever yeah. it is the command is. So that's going to be weird. Sure. That's going to be funny, actually. Sure, let's, sure. Let's be honest. It's going to be hilarious. I would, I would agree, though. Uh, Android Wear, definitely a, a platform that I'm really curious to see what else comes out of it. As for the Samsung Gear Live, my recommendation was a little bit looser than that. I was saying try, only because right now, you ha if you want to get in on Android Wear, 
you have two options. These are the two options. And I wouldn't necessarily say don't buy this because I've actually really enjoyed using this hardware. But like you said, we know the Moto 360 is right around the corner. It's got the round interface, uh, the round watch face, and uh, very excited about that. So I wouldn't necessarily say rush out and buy this, but if you're curious to get in on the Android Wear bandwagon right now, I could recommend that you get this and uh, check it out. It's only 200 bucks, so that's not the end of the world, I, I suppose. The truth is that if I didn't have this eval, eval unit from Google, I would buy one of these, yeah. and then I would probably sell it when the Moto 360 sure. came out. Sure. Because I'm such a gadget freak, and that's always an option. If you buy it, if you buy this for 229, you'd probably be able to sell it for 150 bucks, 170. Yeah. Totally worth it for that two-month interim or whatever. You really want Google now on your wrist. You, this is yeah. just it, it improves your life. <laughs> and and, it's, and it's, re it's really fantastic to have all this on your wrist. And it saves you from taking your phone out of your pocket 150 Which is hard. times a day. It's so hard. And that's quite a promise, actually. But I have noticed that to be true. Yeah, it, it is true. It does save me from pulling my phone out as well. It much. is true.